do I need this or don't need? Uh, no, just for the audience. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so, sorry for the technical difficulties because I'm using something called Linux and Linux is not no, playing well. <laughs> uh, I will not go in detail, but well, it works. Okay. <laughs> uh, so let me give you a bit of background just now. Uh, it was correct that Django, when I saw the ORM, I saw the migration thing, I fell in love straight. I told Jeff, my colleague, that wow, like that are so nice, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, love at first sight is always like that, right? Infatuation. But after that. <laughs> You're gonna have problems because <laughs> love has commitment and commitment includes problems. <laughs> uh, my wife is here also, so I think she's loving. So uh, in this case, um, so <laughs> so as, as you know, uh, in Django you just create a model, you just need to define the fields, and after that you just run a command, everything is out. And after you run a command, they'll deploy straight into the database. They'll make, uh, they'll do perform migration, lah, right? So that's perfect. And in this particular company I'm with, Jewel Payment Tech, uh, we have different clients, and different clients have different requirements. Different requirements means different databases, and therefore, whoa, Django, perfect, because it's agnostic to a certain level. Asterisk. Okay. So in this case, um, I would like to share with you a case study. Of course, I'll, I'll give you a bit of background on what happened. I'll share with you a case study about uh, what we went through, about one single endpoint that gave us some problems, and we want to figure out how to fix it. Of course, in reality, a disclaimer is that this is a front-end and back-end collaborative work, and today I, of course, only touch on the Django part of things that we try to optimize at the endpoint part. Um, so if you are here, you want to know about optimizing at Django side, I think it may help a bit. Um, but if you're looking for something general Python stuff, maybe not really, not too detailed in that sense. But let's see how it goes, and you're free to ask questions. So this is me, I'm Sian Le, uh, that's my LinkedIn, and that's my Twitter handler. I'm from Jewel Payment Tech, and as usual, we talk about our company. So our company uh, in the, the finance and banking industry. And we work on acceptance and security, we manage fraud, and also um, we also uh, do some software for merchant onboarding. And certainly, as usual, again, uh, we look for people. So if you're interested, uh, contact me. You can contact my colleagues here. And uh, of course, we have a counter outside. You also can talk to us. Now, if you say that you're very technical, you don't like Django, you want all the more Python stuff in terms of DB optimization, last year I shared about it. If you're interested, you can look at it. And of course, I will give you the slide also later on, then you can check it out. Um, so I'll need to give some credits because work is always collaborative. Uh, I work with Wonderful people, Jeff, Swimming, and Willy. And this is our collaborative effort in fixing this issue. So let's start with these three alphabets. You know these three alphabets, right? Now, startup scene, very strong. Everyone talk about MVV, minimum viable product. Sounds so good, right? So, look at this. This is a piece of paper. Let's say your company startup come up with a plane. You're supposed to design the most MVV plane of all. The first plane is a paper plane. But paper plane can't go very far, right? So that's the exact problem when we try to work on MVP and after that we try to make it something called VP. Ah, then your head starts to get itchy and start scratching because sometimes it's just a bit painful. So, before we jump into the case study, I'd like to share with you some of the tools that we use. It's something very basic, perhaps you already know. So first of all, uh, at browser level, we have something inspection tool. I think just now also someone has showed it, where, or maybe in our group, can't remember, where we just go to developer tools and we can see exactly every single request that is being made and also response. And most importantly, we are looking at this particular place, which is a uh, time to first byte, where here it says three seconds. So um, uh, if you're familiar with uh, web plus backend kind of uh, interaction in terms of requests, with API, usually the time span at the API level plus DB, most likely is at the time to first byte. Okay? So um, if you want to first identify issue, perhaps usually we check this lah. So that we can point finger, just joking. Colleagues, front end not here. Okay, uh, just joking. 
So, uh, <laughs> so in this case, uh, after that, of course, we go into a deeper level, we go to code level inspection. Some people call profiling because we try to profile the, the performance or the operation. And in this case, uh, we, we have we use something very nice, it's Django Silk. And you give us something. Uh, this one I took it from their GitHub page where you can see all the API endpoints uh, with the time span and how many queries being fired and stuff like that. Sometimes you're amazed that when you look at the Django Silk, you say, hey, why this endpoint got 1,000 queries made? Huh. Okay. Um, then, of course, uh, you can go into detail, you can see uh, other stuff also. And uh, the good part is that you also tell us the execution time and, and stuff like that. Okay. Now, let's go into B just right before the case study. What talk about this alligator? <laughs> so just now I said I fall in love really because it's so easy, right? Migration, schema auto-generate and stuff like that. It's beautiful. But however, because with this kind of high level abstraction tool, certainly it gives us some issues also, which is when you say you, you fall in love with someone or ORM, you need to go deep also, right? So sometimes when we use Django ORM, we, we, we tend to be very surface because we assume that ORM does everything for us. Honestly, it's not exactly and absolutely not true. So in this case, we need to figure it out. Because when we say just work, actually, it's just about we need a lot of work. So uh, in this case, certainly, uh, the documentation is the best place. But sometimes we just didn't bother to check the documentation because we code first, right? Then after that, we see what's the issue. Documentation is still the best place to go. So the case study is, I call it D.10K because we don't have a project name for it. But in general, D represents dashboard. So we, we have this product, we have a dashboard, a very beautiful one. But, uh, during early stage design, because we come out with something more MVP kind of product, uh, we somehow have an endpoint that fetch every single form in that sense. Um, so then after that one, uh, our client actually complained because they're very slow. So we went and check and then we found that hey, this particular time to first byte very long. Um, later I'll show you a screenshot. Then after that, then internally we have a discussion. We say let's set, we plug something from the air, 10,000 forms, 10,000 objects or 10,000 items that we retrieve from DB in that particular endpoint and see how it works. Haha, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. the 10k reality. Uh, here, five minutes. Okay, so it means you can go and bundle your three in one, old town copy, and come back. Oh, okay, done. So, um, so this is the initial performance 10,000. So, first, when you want to identify issue, you must first understand what is the issue, right? So, here clearly, five minutes is really slow. So though reality hurts, but it's important first to acknowledge the issue. And just now that screenshot is actually taken from Django Silk. Yeah. So first step in performance optimization is to set our baseline. 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 <laughs> Baseline. Oh, it's okay. Can you hear me? Okay, so uh, first step in, uh, in, in troubleshooting in, in terms of optimizing our endpoint is to first uh, set our baseline. And in this case means assuming in the most ideal scenario how, can, how much we can shave off. Just now it's five minutes, right? So you have to tell your boss you over because your boss will ask, oh, so you want to optimize, optimize until what level? So how do we set the baseline? In this case, we just disable the chunk of code that we think that we can optimize. After that, we get this. I think I use uh, the dark interface in Chrome, that's why I got a black color one. So in general, it becomes three seconds. We disable the whole chunk of code. Oh, okay. Uh, because it's three seconds, that's why now it works already. Just not five minutes doesn't work. It delays one. Oh, is it? <laughs> okay, so um, <laughs> so um, so means our, our target would be most likely 
the maximum we can do in terms of optimization is three seconds. Of course, in reality, it cannot be 100% optimization. Uh, then that is pure human mistakes, right? So in this case, uh, roughly we know it's three seconds. In reality, because we also collaborate with the front end code and, and we try to change our endpoint, then of course we go to sub second. Uh. But in this specific case, we are looking at that particular chunk of five minutes minus three seconds. So then we kick in into one thing we call process elimination because we need to try to check who is the troublemaker in that maybe 100 line of codes, right? So um, we need to remove the noise. We need to find the low hanging fruit that give us the most reward. That's the most important thing in a, a process of elimination. So there are four things that I've summarized it in our process. Some are pretty straightforward, I would assume. Uh, if it's not, I think it's helpful. And some is a bit unconventional, perhaps. I'm not sure. You can tell me. Uh, but one thing I need to uh, state is that uh, in this entire process of uh, sharing this case study, it's just a matter of optimizing the endpoint. It's not about the best tech. It's not about the most ideal best code of the world. But it's about achieving the business outcome that client want to have a reasonable load time. And based on the situation that we have, how can we make the best out of it, all right? So the first thing, Django has, ORM has something called lazy load. Uh, if you're not sure why it's lazy load, very simple. When you have one table, you link to another table, Django doesn't uh, load directly in terms of the uh, foreign table relationship. In this case, one to many, many to many, or one to one, they don't load first. So when you trigger that particular uh, attribute, then they will load it. So in this case, let's look at a quick, uh, this thing. Here we have form objects, uh, just to show you that there's 10,000 records. Then after that, uh, we have uh, objects all, and then we go through, and then we have form author name. And quite obvious, this is a, a foreign table relationship. Ah. So in this case, uh, question is, how many queries are made? Anyone? N plus one. Wow, very technical. Correct. So um, it's N plus one. So in this case, uh, we talk about big O notation. To keep it simple means we want to know how many times it happens. Uh. Then of course, uh, O1 is the most ideal because one time only. Uh, N plus one is crazy because we have 10,000, right? So in this case, if it's N plus one, we have actually 10,001 requests being made. The reason is because lazy load. So when a form is linked to an author, Every form got author, right? So every time we trigger author, we trigger another query. So we have 10,001. That is not good at all. But look at the code. Pleasant, right? Very pleasant. <laughs> but we need to change the way how we do it. So in general, we have one to one, one to many, and many to many. And for one to one and one to many, we can use select related. That will help to pre uh, load all those things in one single query. That's like our plain old SQL kind of statement, right? We do the join ourselves and we preload it. Um, of course, if we have many to many relationship, we can do the prefetch related. Uh, but in this case, uh, they do something interesting here. They do two queries and they manually join in Python level. But all these things are all handled uh, in Django ORM, so we don't need to do anything. So these are some of the straightforward kind of uh, um, optimization but well I presume if you work in Django long enough most likely you know this after that um, this is something that perhaps a more more sometimes you can ignore it but in our case we can't ignore it because we have 10,000 records right so uh, if you are not sure actually for Django model uh, the object is actually very expensive why is it expensive? Because when you try to trigger 10,000 records, what happens is that first you have to go and fetch the whole 10,000 stuff come over back. And after that, you need to populate the object one by one. Then you have to populate 10,000 objects. Well, in general, it's expensive lah, because it's just too many things, right? So in this case, what can we do? Um, we have to skip uh, model object uh, instantiation because we don't want that object. Most likely we don't need because it's a read operation. Uh, most likely we don't need the object anyway. And after that, we need to try to minimize the data retrieval because um, 
there's a round trip time cost between your application and also DB, right? And if your total data size is super big, in this case, 10,000 is very big, if you fetch everything, whereas you only want to fetch the name, but you fetch the whole big chunk of thing come back, then of course the network transfer rate also take into account. Perhaps you say, ah, internet very fast, the answer is correct, but client expect one second or under sub second, right? Then that contributes certain costs. So in this case, uh, also something very straightforward, I presume, uh, is that at this moment we use select related, but we fetch 10,000 records, right? So that, that is very fat and slow. And after that, what we can do is we can try to use values where in general, Django just populate a SQL and only fetch a specific, um, in this case, got three things lah, or three columns or three things that we define to be retrieved. So that's pretty straightforward, I guess. Um, then after that, um, you can see here is that maybe values is in dictionary format. It depends on your application la, or it depends on your code level at that moment whether is it pleasant to use dictionary or not. But in this case, if you look at the print, it's quite ugly, right? Even though we are using F uh, string, but it's still ugly. So in, in certain scenarios, uh, in our use case, we actually use value list because uh, Narali is a tuple and we can just uh, do, a, do something like this here. Okay, pretty straightforward. And after that, uh, nicer la, in a way. But one thing um, that we have to take note is that if you use values, sometimes when you do all the join relationship, it's a bit ugly, uh, right? But it's acceptable because it's super fast. Ah, then after that, for value list, we also can flatten, flatten, flatten. We also can flatten the, the results because, for example, if you are just fetching one column, uh, most likely we can flatten it, become a pure array, and after that, uh, we just use it. So, um, I think more important is not to know that particular method, but how then can we actually prove and can actually measure what exactly happened in background? Because ultimately, ORM is uh, on a high level abstraction. We also need to know what happened behind the scene. So uh, Django provide a very easy way for us to see it. It's a connection from Django.db. So what we need to do is we just need to first check uh, the number of queries. Supposedly, ideally, you get a zero. Then after that, you can perform whatever query that you make. And after that, um, well actually, this one haven't triggered yet because it's query set, right? Query set at this point is still not yet uh, translated into a real query file. So perhaps we need to do a list or something like that. Then after that, when you check the length, you should get only one because a value list should populate everything in just one single query. But in this case, you actually get zero in one second. <laughs> yeah, because the query set is not yet executed, right? So, okay. <laughs> So, um, the best part of query set is that, I'm sorry, query set. Blah. In, uh, for connection.queries, you actually can check out what is the actual SQL so that you can understand better also how Django uh, formulate or populate the SQL. Blah. And best part, I like it, is because we can also see the time. So, based on the time, you can ask yourself this honest question blah. does it make sense or not? If the time taken, is 0.x, usually it's considered slower, it's a slow query. It's not even one second is slow. 0.x usually is considered slow. So that's something to think about. Ah, and then the next thing. Um, this is not really exactly Django RM, but it's something that usually we use for endpoint. It's a Django REST framework. And uh, I included it because it's one of the big uh, pro troublemakers for us. Again, because our scenario is very special, we have 10,000 records, and how, how can we play around with it? Then we realize that after we try to process the elimination, we try to remove some code, disable code, and slowly we re-enable the code, and see who or how much time it is taken and stuff like that. We realize that serializer takes uh, quite a long time in processing that 10,000 stuff, or in this case, objects. Lah. So, how? Ah? <laughs> because you're stuck with this fella, right? You're stuck with 
Django REST framework, and it's a good framework. It's just that our use case is a bit edge on the edge, eg side. So how? The reaction is like that. Lah. Why is it like that? Because um, it's really, really slow. And what happened is that we took a bit of creative juice, and I'm not sure whether you do it or not. We resorted this thing called manual serialization. And to keep it simple, manual serialization means you return the dictionary. <laughs> okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I know your face is like that. Okay, your face is like that, right? Yeah, okay, okay, sorry. Uh, I'm only one year old in Django. But, 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 we saved three minutes. <laughs> okay, so sometimes desperate time requires desperate measurement. And sometimes we may feel that, oh, this is not the right way, not Pythonic, or this is not the Django, I don't know what is that, but I, I don't know. Uh, my colleague always tell me Django, Nick. But, uh, but sometimes we have to come to senses. Lah. If our scenario is a bit on the edge side and it doesn't make sense for us to continue to use that thing, maybe we need to consider to let go. Even though uh, we have to be very careful lah, when we return the dictionary, we have to make sure that we, we follow the spec lah, in that sense, right? But that's every three minutes and I will do it. <laughs> okay? So in this case, um, something very, very important here is that try something different even though it's a bit unconventional. I laugh. So, <laughs> after that, just now I say that uh, we're trying to support different database because uh, we have different clients and usually uh, bank, banks uh, have very strict requirements of what they want to use. Not because of their tech stack is very important or superior, but most likely it's more of a logistic reasons because uh, they want licensing, they want support and stuff like that. So in this case, uh, we need to support different database. So if, you, if we want to talk about optimization at database or QE level, we realize that sometimes it's very limited option that we have because we have to go exactly to the QE or go to the table schema to optimize things, right? But unfortunately, if we use ORM, we try to be agnostic. Things are very painful because a lot of things that you used to know and you used to do, cannot do. <laughs> because ORM doesn't do it that way, right? Uh, I give one, uh, one, one, one example is that we have that many-to-many -many relationship kind of uh, relationship, uh, kind of things that we can try to use value list to retrieve, or we can try to use values to retrieve, but the records are not exactly correct because if let's say one record has two, two um, many to two things, then you have two duplicated rows, right? In this case, how? Uh? <laughs> Doesn't make sense, right? So. Um, first thing come in mind if you are a very DB kind of person, you say, ah, we have string aggregation. Uh, I was very proud, I said that we have string aggregation, we have group concatenation in MySQL, or we have uh, string aggregation in uh, my MSSQL, which one of our clients use, and also uh, Postgres. Postgres supports string aggregation. So what happens is that we can actually just order by that particular uh, column, and then, eh, sorry, group by, eh, no, we group by the ID or something like that, but we can group concate the uh, that particular field that maybe uh, have duplicates record in that sense. So um, something like this, if it's in, uh, I put the Postgres version here. Okay, so you can do something like this. Oh, this is fantastic, man, and it's super efficient. So at the DB level, then after we found oh, MSQL support this thing, but our client's version don't have this thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, means what? Mean like that. Means like that. Okay. Transfer your mind, go to another place, and try to figure out what, what else you can do because nothing you can do actually. <sighs> so, we still need to have performance, but yet we cannot use uh, DB level kind of stuff. We can, cannot use concave. Actually, Django ORM has this concave thing, uh, but because the DB MSQL doesn't support it, you can't, right? So how? So we fall back to the Python way of doing things. Uh, Python provides us, uh, in terms of dictionary, has two very convenient methods called set, default, and also get. So the decision is very simple. We will retrieve value list or something 
like that. But uh, we'll try to self-aggregate, we concate ourselves in that sense. So how to do it? Very simple, because Python level are pretty efficient also. So um, let's say we, we try to Okay, we try to get values. Sorry, uh, it should be value list. Okay, we value list it so that it becomes uh, just a tuple. And then after that, uh, we just create a new dictionary. Since we throw away Django REST framework, right? Okay, so we create our own dictionary. Then after that, uh, the query set, if it's a tuple, we just expand it, ID and also category. Then after that, what we first do is we set default, we try to fetch a particular uh, key value in that sense. So based on the form ID, because that's a unique, right? The unique ID in that sense. So after that, we have the serialized form, one single form. Then after that, we try to set the categories, but we try to fetch, I mean, we, we want to create a variable that links to a specific key inside that dictionary, in that form itself, uh, called categories. If it's not found, we return an empty array. List. <laughs> then after that, we just append the category that we receive. So in this case, uh, in general, we are doing something like prefetch kind of thing uh, in the first approach, if I'm mistaken. But we do it at our own level, and it still works, even though we don't have that built-in DB kind of operation. So, yay! Uh, in general, we shave down to, I think, about three seconds, if I'm mistaken. And of course, with uh, other things that we try to um, change our feature, actually, so that front end, we, we try to offload some workload to front end, so that it's faster. Um, disclaimer, uh, in fact, we face a lot of problems. It's just that I didn't share it here because it's a very specific issue. For example, we face a lot of issue with MSQL because it, it's happened to be in its own world. Uh, is query has a query size, specific query size. Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, it's about one zero two four or one thousand bytes. It, yeah. yeah. So if you think about it, sometimes. It's still like that. Uh, yeah, it's still like that. Yeah. Or maybe my our version is still like that. So, so in general, when you try, if you are in the MySQL world or something like that, it's always like select something from what where ID in. Then you have whole long chunk of IDs, right? That's possible, right? <laughs> in MSQL, not possible. So don't do that. <laughs> because uh, once it hits the 1,000, you get funny error. Consistent funny error. So um, what we did was uh, we, we tried to write a convenient function to actually detect that thing. Uh, and then we split. We, we do a chunking uh, in terms of the query so that we can uh, fire multiple um, queries to overcome that issue. It sounds silly, right? It works. <laughs> Because there's a limit, therefore we have no choice but to chunk it. Uh, how we do it? Also very easy, because uh, Django gives us that uh, uh, we, very easily we can check what's the database uh, provider. Then based on the provider, if it's Microsoft, you're mistaken, then we do the chunking. So remember the word Microsoft. <laughs> Not here, right? Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Oh no. <laughs> So, uh, thank you. Uh, any questions? Should be relatively simple and straightforward.